What's up, music fans of the internet? I'm Derek. And I'm Kevin. And we are last week's album, where we're talking about good music. But before we go any further, we're going to start things off like we always do. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, everyone at home. Cheers, Derek. Are we drinking the same beer? <laughs> I think so. I, this is... Oh, this is a first. This is a first. Uh, completely unplanned, but that's pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> All right. So this week, aside from drinking the same beer, we are going to be talking about the same album, which is planned. Um, and this week, we're talking about Paperback Ghosts, which is the seventh LP or long play release by Comet Gain. Uh, Comic Gain being a British indie pop band, um, started in 92, led by frontman David Feck. Um, they've kind of had a rotating uh, cast of characters in the band, so I'm not going to go through all of them right now. Um, so here they are, 20 years on into their career, and uh, Paperback Ghosts is their seventh album. So Kevin, why don't you start us off by telling us what you think it sounds like. All right, Derek. Um, I think Paperback Ghost sounds like Bell and Sebastian taking a midnight run a la Dexy with Temples. Nice, nice. I like the Temples uh, reference there. Uh, I think this uh, Paperback Ghost sounds like Brit indie rock vets fuse psychedelic folk Brit rock sounds into bubblegum pop ditties weighed down only by their heavy lyrics. Which isn't a bad thing. I'm just saying. Just saying. Um, so that brings us to key tracks. Uh, I had Long After Tonight's Candle is Blown and 1604. Uh, Kevin, what did you have? For my key tracks, Derek, I chose The Last Love Letter and Far From the Pavilion. Nice, nice. Well, I had uh, the opening track, uh, Long After Tonight's Candle is Blown, so I'll start there. Um, and I just want to start off by saying, Kevin, I bet you hated this track title solely for the reason uh, of the way tonight is spelled here, T-O-N-I-T-E. I mean, sometimes I read things like that, and I'm like, it's the British spelling, but I'm pretty sure it's not the British spelling in this case. Is, it, is that right? Uh, I don't think it's the British spelling. I think it's the um, shorter spelling. I'm not sure where it came from, but you're right. It is a pet peeve of mine, but I'll let it slide here. All right. It, well, that's good because uh, musically this one was great. Uh, it started with a playful acoustic guitar, emotive strings. Uh, there were electronic guitar flourishes, subtle percussion, starting off uh, you know, with the Moroccan woodblock, very, very simply. Uh, the intensity builds, uh, highlighted by increased drums and bass, and ultimately builds into this piano-guitar duet that's featured... Um, in a bridge, which I thought was kind of a cool pairing. Uh, lyrics were very insightful, reflection, full of vivid imagery. Uh, one example, he says, the guitars break, we make mistakes, we are freeze-framed in our own dumb light. Um, just kind of really uh, tongue-in-cheek, kind of humorous, while at the same time really uh, making some poignant points um, lyrically here. I just thought the breadth of sound that was built up and the way it kind of ended at the end, there were just these very uh, emotive strings, just these chords winding down, and feck croons, heaven is a lie. It was just kind of this great contrast of uh, lyrical theme and music, just fantastic. Uh, very strong opening track. So, Kevin, why don't you tell us about your first one? All right, we'll go from the first track to the last love letter, although not the last song. <laughs> Uh, we've got pining strings here, jangly guitars, popping drums, smooth uh, male-female harmonies. Uh, one of my favorite lines here goes, I'm affected by the photos you meant to put in the letter that you never sent. And uh, later on in the track, we get this beautiful guitar work over some really whirring synths, some pining strings, this very cooing backup vocals. And uh, overall for me, this one really tiptoed the line between these slower pining ballads on the album um, and then the, the occasional faster, more passionate romps. And I really like how it just straddled that line and brought them both together uh, very, very nicely. Kevin, that's a great segue to my next key track, 1604, which really kind of straddles the middle there of being kind of a slower one, but not quite the 
uh, upbeat romp you were describing earlier. 1604 uh, with the O, you know, this one's completely written out uh, as far as the track tile goes. 16 OH4. Um, it opens with these bouncy guitar riff, just this soul vocal, really kind of simple, bare bones. And then at about the minute mark, it completely shifts to these airy guitars, even pace, drums, uh, bass. Uh, some strings going on there. The lyrics were rather cryptic, um, so I, I don't think this 1604 is based on any historical event, although in one lyric he says, the lesson is learned, but for nothing at all, so, but I couldn't find in Wikipedia's 1604 entry um, that, you know, was a lesson that may not have been learned. Overall, uh, this was kind of one of the shorter in duration songs, clocking in at uh, just a little over two minutes, but I thought uh, the sound was very lush and unique here, and I was really kind of drawn to that. So, Kevin, that brings us to your next key track, which is a pavilion of some location. Uh, first, Eric, I have a very important question for you. Do you like 1604 the song or 1604 the highway better? Uh, um, 1604, the song, I wish I could get around the highway as quick as that song goes by. All right, I figured your answer would, would be in that vein. Uh, moving right along, my uh, second key track, Far From the Pavilion, uh, some very snappy drums, these stair-stepping synths sort of go up and down, psychedelic reverb guitars, bouncing male backup vocals, and for me, this was the best sort of most interesting use of the male and female vocals uh, on the album. Ultimately, it's this triumphant tune from a scorned lady to her playboy lover. And uh, overall, just the voice, the drums, the keyboard, guitar, all really ebb and flow work together in really, really great fashion. Um, I think this is the best orchestrated track on the album um, overall. And then at the end, we get this nice sort of spoken word ending over this bleeding heart guitar. It really ties it all together really, really nicely. So. That's why I dug it. Yeah, Kevin, that's a good one. And that brings us to Best Lyric. So what did you have there? All right, I'm going to go with the Best Lyric from Last Love Letter, uh, my first key track. And it goes, I'm affected by the words that don't fit. They're beautiful, awkward, and they fall into bits. On the ground of the pages you found, from the pockets of poets, keep your attempts to make sound. Uh, just some really nice rhymes, very uh, poignant, as you said earlier. There's a lot of sort of lyrical poetry on this album, and this one really uh, encapsulates that. What was yours, Derek? Uh, mine comes from Sad Love and Other Short Stories, uh, where he asks, What's the saddest love of all? The one that you never had but you can't recall? The one you made up or the one that gives you nothing at all? Uh, just once again, as you said, you, you, there was a lot of uh, poetry to the lyrics here. Um, fantastic rhyme schemes, and that one I thought just kind of stood out similarly to how yours did do. Um, that, and that brings us now to overall rating. Kevin, Paperback Ghosts, what do you think? I'm giving this one a 3 out of 5, Derek. Uh, I thought it was very ambitious, and it's sort of genre jumping. Genre jumping. Uh, <laughs> and it, for me, it made it feel a little disjointed at times. It was a little bit slow because I felt like about three quarters of the album was those slower sort of pining ballads. And me personally, I prefer the beat stuff they did. Um, but when they did it, they did it very well. It's a very sonically literate, uh, literate, excuse me, album. Uh, definitely for music nerds and historians, they'll pick up on their influences and references in the lyrics a lot. Um, for the most part, twinkling, pretty, lush, without being overbearing. And I love the intriguing sort of detail-oriented lyrics. And uh, for me, it took some dedicated listening to really sink my teeth in. Um, and again, personally, I prefer the more upbeat earlier work from earlier albums. But ultimately, for me, I thought it was a great record for those sort of rainy days when the sun is still out. Uh, what is your overall rating, Derek? Kevin, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 for many of the same reasons. I thought the sound, exactly as I said, was very lush. Just very that That drew me in. Um, at times, yeah, it did kind of draw out, but I think it was uh, only for their, they just wanted to orchestrate well, you know, it had a lot of build and uh, ebbs and flows, exactly as you said, which it, it kind of drew it out at some times. Uh, but exactly as you said, the lyrics were very strong, I thought, you know, were kind of uh, added some really shining moments. 
Um, and a lot of really clever one-liners that, you know, have you been like, whoa, did he just say, you know, diving to, you know, hit back so you could go listen to that again, which I thought uh, added a lot. Uh, but there you have it. Overall, a three out of five from both Kevin and I, so you should probably go check this one out. Paperback Ghost by uh, Comet Gain. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our shiz. And join us again next week where we'll be talking about last uh, good music at last week's album. Cheers. Cheers, guys. See you next week.